What's up guys, Fahan here with Za once again and today we have Ezekiel, how are you Ezekiel? Hey, good, I want to apologize to you uh, for hey. coming in the rain Hi, it's fine. and uh, also to our viewers in case uh, you cannot hear whatsoever because uh, it's raining outside and that's mm. what we're doing in the below level lah. Uh -huh. Hopefully the sound isn't too drowned out lah. Mm. And yeah, we have Ezekiel's bike here, the MV Agusta. Uh, Brutale Brutale 800 double R one. That's hmm. a mouthful Yeah, a mouthful <laughs> Very long name <laughs> <laughs> And This is the first MV Agusta review that we have uh. And hopefully there's more uh, MV Agusta riders out there Willing to come out and share their uh, ride with us You know hmm. And get more on, on the show Before Ezekiel tells us a story about his bike hmm. We're going to give a bit of background about it uh. Introduced in 2013, the MV Agusta Brutale 800 RR is a naked class of motorcycle from the Italian manufacturer. The Brutale models are known for their triple cylinder engines and exotic nature. Engine is a 798cc liquid cool inline 3 cylinder 4 stroke UHC with integrated fuel injection and a 6 speed manual transmission. In Singapore, as with any MV Agusta, the Brutale 800 RR is an extremely rare and obscure bike on the streets. Alright guys, so shout out to our sponsor, Liquid Moly. Do check out their online store for awesome motorbike care related products. Support us by clicking on the link below to view the range of products. Or use our promo code upon checking out. Alright, so Ezekiel, um, well, honestly speaking, before I met you, uh, mm. I don't know anything about MB Agusta. Mm. I only know that I have a friend who rides one. Hmm. That's all I know lah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what made you want to get such a rare bike which has little to no presence in Singapore? So for myself, I feel the main reason is like what you mentioned, of course it's rare. The design is actually different from the, the usual Japanese bikes that uh, we all had previously as well. Mm -hmm. The other main thing is of course the performance. Uh, performance of the bike itself so fits very well, more than adequate for, for our streets lah. For street mm. use, yeah. Oh really? I didn't mm. know that. Uh. <laughs> and when I did my research online about the Brutale 800 double R, mm. MV Agusta describes it as a super naked bike. <laughs> <laughs> you can see from the design also, it looks like a... It's a state of the art, you know. When it came in just now, I was like, eh, siya lah, lawa lah siya <laughs> I mean, like, this bike is so beautiful, you know. It's like, I, I don't know how to describe it. Eh. Uh, it's like a state of the art. It has a precision of technology mm. and then the beauty of it. You know, it's just mesmerizing. Eh. Even the brand also, MP Agusta, they, mm. they, their vision is to like, it's like Bukati, you know, they want mm. to uh, release and do works of art. So mm. they treat uh, this bike as a work of art, Correct. which is uh, very rare to hear from a manufacturer. For yourself, why the Brutale 800? <laughs> okay, so because I feel that uh, 1000cc, like like what most of class 2 riders actually go for, uh, it's a bit too much lah. Mm. Uh, I mean in terms of, because I use this as a daily rider, so in terms of consumption and all that, eh, this can save a bit here and there. And not so bulky and heavy lah, that's as like the 1000cc one lah. So mm. I thought why not just try something middleweight, for my first class 2 bike lah, mm. and see how it actually goes. Then the time when you bought it, uh, mm. how much was it? It was at about 40, 43, 44, so around 40 plus K lah for, for bike, uh, new bike as well lah. Where you bought it from? Yuheng? Uh, Yuheng, uh, Yuheng Motors. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I know my motor carry MV Agusta also, right? Ah, yeah. not that I know of lah, but... Mm. How long have you been riding this bike? Uh, it's been about around 5 months. Before mm. this bike, how, what were you riding? Uh, for 2A, I was riding a Yamaha R3, uh -huh. the sports bike. Then uh, before that, 2B was Yamaha Sabre, the MT-15, uh, which uh, you guys did previously okay. as well. So how would you compare the performance to maybe uh, handling and performance to your previous bikes that you have ridden before? Compare. <laughs> or maybe even the uh, Class 2 SSDC bike, for example. Just uh, to my license uh, CDC la, so oh. we will compare from there. That one we, we, uh, we were using MT-07 mm -hmm. so MT-07 I think is pretty much a toned down simple bike la, mm -hmm. if I can say. La. So with this the hand never control properly like you can go out of control la, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, your personal opinion is talky. Yeah, pretty pretty talky. La. Yeah. Is the acceleration um, Sensitive? Uh, very, because uh, for this bike, it's actually using ride by wire. Oh, yeah. Okay. So every little bit of input that they give the bike, uh, it goes lah. And then how's the maneuverability like in traffic? You know, like for example, mm. you want to lead speed or you want ah. to do a crank course. <laughs> crank course. <laughs> is it like 
how to say very bulky, uh, bulky on my new. Starting, I wasn't used to it though because uh, if you can see the handlebar is actually pretty wide lah. Uh, my previous bike or the, even the school bike is actually much easier. Until you get used to it, then it's actually quite nimble lah. Yeah, because I mean the, the wider handlebar actually helps to maneuver the bike easier as well. Yeah, the other than that, uh, the bike is a bit higher than usual. I have to tiptoe as well lah, even for, for really? my height. What's yeah. your height? Uh, 175. Is it because the seat is wider? Uh, the seat is actually thinner <laughs> though. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> so, so it's uh, higher lah. So, so that's something that, that uh, we have to consider about as well. Mm. Mm. But then, no, no issues, I mean, cornering and all that. Uh, pretty simple, lah, pretty simple to, to control how's once you get used to it. How's the riding posture like? It's a bit bent forward, even mm -hmm. though it's a street, I mean, a naked bike. Lah. But other than that, long distance, pretty okay. Lah. How about? Yeah. How about the tummy part? Is it, does it, does it uh, like, put a strain, you know? You know, those with tummy like me, like ours, like ours, like ours uh, would definitely, sports bike, definitely like, would put a strain on the, the tummy part. Mm. How so, about this one? For this one, it's okay, because uh, I can see the tank is uh, straighter, it also can support the tummy better. Ah. Yeah, but the back, the back still can feel a bit, because like, of the <laughs> position, even though it's not much as uh, lean forward. Uh -huh. Yeah, the back can still feel a bit of soreness like, after a while. Mm. Like. Does it affect your back? Huh? It's still okay, la, manageable la, as compared to even the R3 previous bike. But this one is still better. Would you like take this bike on a long ride? Considering after you already explained that the riding posture mm. may mm. Uh, may not be very comfortable mm. in the in the long run. Mm. Uh, would you like want to bring this on, on a touring trip? Tour, touring trip, la, like going overseas or that. Mm. I actually would consider though. I mean, I haven't had a chance to try. La. But in any case, I mean the bike looks good uh, on anybody as well, lah. So why not give it a go, <laughs> gain a bit of attention here and there, lah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm still waiting for the chance to to head overseas, lah, if possible. Yeah, yeah lah. Being a rare bike in Singapore, mm. and no, especially the brand itself, MB Agusta. The name of it, uh, just sounds exclusive, you know. Yes, mm. yes, correct. Don't you think? <laughs> uh, so, uh, how's the population like for this bike in Singapore? I mean. You're not, you're, not, you're not scared man, like you don't have the available spare parts mm. in case anything or everything breaks down, you know? Honestly, I am lah, <laughs> but I mean with, with the after sales service that uh, they have provided so far by Yuheng, I think they actually gave me the confidence to, to carry on the bike as well lah. So far, I don't have much issues with the parts as well lah. Warranty? Three years Two years. Uh, warranty? I can't remember, it's three, I think it's three years, uh, three or five years, uh, but around that, three years. Not so bad, uh, yeah, long. okay. Uh, okay, uh, still okay. Uh, three to five years warranty? I, if I'm not wrong, oh. another three or five years. Yeah, a bit special have, because, because... To have mm. three years warranty is already so good. Sir. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> this one, five years warranty, wow. Yeah. That's right. If I'm not mistaken, I know. Uh, mm. I know that you've ridden this bike for five months, mm. uh, but have you heard about any problems or issues mm. that is inherent in this model? Mm. Uh, before I bought the bike, I actually did my own research. Lah. Apparently, there was a pretty common issue with the spread clutch. Most of the videos or forum that I went to, they say they had uh, issues starting the bike, then spread clutch suddenly give up halfway on the road and, and mm. such. La. But for the newer models, uh, not much issue la, other than the, the first time I had my exhaust valve fault light came on. La. So so this that one is actually a butterfly valve on the exhaust itself. La. That oh. one, yeah, that there was a fault. But I just got a servo eliminator. So that's this like microchip la, mm -hmm. to actually take out that part. Yeah, so uh, something like ZU part. La. Yeah. Then after that, it's okay lah. Everything is good. So it's all covered under warranty lah. Mm, that one, the servo eliminator is uh, I bought it myself lah. Because if I want to just uh, fix the exhaust valve, I, I can actually do that under warranty as well lah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the exhaust valve just makes the I mean it controls the emi the emission noise lah. Yeah. So not much of a use for the bike actually. Ah, mm. So I have to talk about the Brutale 800 double R's design lah. It's mm. so angular, mm. a lot of angular lines, and also there's this. Thing that I like, uh. you, can your, you can put your hand in here, uh, you can see. <laughs> and uh, it looks very similar to a Ducati Monster, uh, mm. my personal mm. opinion. Yeah, mm. I mean, at, at, at the single glance, it looks like a monster, but it's slightly shorter. And also, like, there's issues on the DR also. Uh. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's a very exclusive bike, uh, and mm. you get a lot of looks when you're riding on road with it. Yes, actually, like, like some random, I like, just minding my own business on the road, then suddenly, like, like eh, how come got like, this, this person looking at me from the side, like, like another rider or what? 
Yeah, you, you do get more looks lah mm. than the usual lah. Uh, how about accessories wise for the Brutale 800? Is there a lot of it on the road? Unfortunately, not that I know of though. From what I heard from my friends or people that actually rode this bike, they actually have to get their parts uh, mostly online. Like they want to accessorize. Then it's not uh, usual parts. I think you can go to the shop to 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 get it as well lah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but talking about parts like uh, your your levers, your lever guard, and all this kind of thing, most of the time you have to go online to get it overseas lah overseas website yeah, stick out pipe uh, I love the pipe <laughs> <laughs> pipe stylo lah three yeah. three, three <laughs> yeah, come out uh. so I think one cover bottom side one is the suit <laughs> just, just a joke lah it has a very interesting design uh. this one is a uh, which, which model uh, which year which year which year this one is actually a 2018 model lah uh. what's the difference between the 2018 and the, and the current one? Quite a bit though. So for the current one, instead of the usual LCD display, uh, we actually get a new TFT display on the new model. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the pipes are more angular. La. Yeah, instead of the usual round ones that we, we have. Yeah, other than that, uh, they got a smart clutch uh, system as well, which actually makes the bike like a scooter as well. La. So you basically donate, donate your clutch to function. Also, oh, you just change gear. Ah, correct. So even like on stop lights and everything, you donate the clutch. You don't need to hold on to the clutch. La. Oh, basically. so you just throt uh, close throttle mm. and then change gear. Correct. Oh, okay. Mm. I know what you're saying. I know what you want to say. <laughs> I know what you want to say. <laughs> You guys know right? Do comment, put in the comment. What do you think I was gonna say? <laughs> so far, um, for this bike, how is the fuel consumption like? And on a full tank, how far can you go? Okay, so for fuel consumption, it runs on a 16.5 to 17. I don't know why I got mixed uh, numbers, but I think it should be around 17 litres okay. uh, full tank. It runs about 14 to 15 kilometre. A liter, not that good of the consumption lah. We will probably get about like 250 about there, less about than 300. Yeah. So uh, actually calculated lah. So every time I would probably pump about 9 to 10 liters, then mm -hmm. that will be about 160 to 180 kilometers lah mileage for that. So around there lah. Uh, Ezekiel, what's the one special thing about this bike? Okay, so the special thing is uh, which I always wanted, like, I see always uh, on, on, on videos like people using it. I haven't got the chance to try it. It's actually the quick shifter la, up and down. For those who have not tried, uh, even I, I wasn't a believer myself until I actually tried the bike. La. I mean the, the quick shifter itself. It's fun, la, it's fun. Oh, you mean it, it comes with the bike? Ah, yes, correct. Manufacturer, I mean it's original mm, stock. From stock. stock. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's stock, yeah. cool, man. <laughs> Guys, yeah. it's very, very nice to use, uh, you know, to, to clutch in, play the clutch and all that. Just mm. tup, 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 tup. Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask about the population of the Mi Gusta. Is there a lot of uh, riders riding it actually? You know, do you happen to know any group or MV Gusta group? Or part of any group? I mean, we do have WhatsApp group chat and all as well. Lah. So, but from the numbers that I see, not as many as uh, comparing with uh, the usual bikes that I had previously, lah, the groups. So, yeah, I'm still, still not as popular. Eh. Mm -hmm. That's uh, other brands lah. Do you think that the, the name of the brand gives an exclusiveness that makes people think oh this brand must this bike must be very expensive uh, or the awareness mm. of this bike mm. is not there. That's why people you know sh tend to shy off uh, this brand. I think so as well. Lah. I mean look at the logo itself, uh, it's pretty different from the usual Japanese bike mm. that, that we have as well. Then other than that, I think because of the availability in the market as well. Lah. Like I mean you cannot just go to any shop as much as you want to and then say that we want this bike. Yeah. So we need to purposely go, go and find it mm. from a certain place as well. Lah. Yeah, mm. People you hear uh, Amir Gusta. Huh? What the yeah, I never hear before. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that, no? Yeah, at least hopefully this video will get some awareness mm. on the brand. Yeah, and hopefully uh, MB Agusta riders out there, if mm. you still own a bike or have you previously owned an MB, M, an MB Agusta <laughs> before, maybe you can just put in the comment or come forward and share us your, your ride. I know you're riding this for five months. Mm. Uh, but so far, what's the best memory you have with you? Uh, best memories, uh, uh, it's also still the, the quick shifter. La. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the exhaust and everything is really fun, especially on the expressway. La, but of course, uh, do ride safely. Mm -hmm. That was important. And, uh, for yourself, who would you recommend the Brutale 800 double R for? I would recommend this to somebody who wants, uh, I mean, to, to actually have a bike for a longer period of time. 
I mean, like for those that you know don't want to keep changing bikes, like can actually consider this because I mean, it, it itself is a work of art already, lah. Maybe I definitely you get a lot of looks with it, lah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right, right, maybe, right. maybe for those who want to be unique mm. among mm. their idea friends, ah, uh, can can I want to show off a bit, lah. Uh, uh, can <laughs> consider this, uh? Uh, With that, I really hope that more of uh, you guys on the road can actually consider this bike. I mean, uh, as much as it's it is a Conti bike, uh, people always say like a uh, motorcycle, lah. Uh, they want to get parts <laughs> and all that, lah, uh, but. Within these few months, I have not much of an issue lah. So everything is good. Uh, maintenance is still okay. I actually, did my first engine oil change and all that lah. Although it's, it's covered, but it's not that expensive lah. Yeah, mm -hmm. compared to other bikes, around the same price actually. How much? How, how many bottles? Uh, of yeah, yeah, if I'm not wrong, about three, three plus bottles. Mm. So not 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 that heavy on on that as well lah. Mm. Thank you, Ezekiel, once again right, for coming you. out and sharing your thank you. your experience with the MBA Gusta mm. Brutale 800 double R. Mm. <laughs> Long name. <laughs> uh, it's really a unique bike. Mm. I must say, uh, you never really see it on the roads, and you know it really catches the eye. You know, and not only mm. that, it's relatively unknown. You know, better than the my personal opinion mm. uh, It catches the attention of everybody, and uh, it's. Really, it's not well known, it's mm. less common uh -huh. and something unique like as opposed to the Ducatis. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ducati you can see actually a lot on the road yeah. nowadays. Mm, yes, uh, correct. Same same but different. Uh, uh, same, same, but different. <laughs> as long as Italian. Uh, <laughs> Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any riders want to review the bike us, you can mm. touch us on our social media pages below. If you have anything else to comment or any suggestion, put in the uh, comment section below. Like and share this video with your riding kakis and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to support us and our awesome sponsor, Liki Muli. Uh, do check out their online store, click on the link below and use our promo code upon checking out. Yeah, that's it for the vlog and we will see you in the next one. Yeah, well.